Hey there, and welcome into Main Street Living. I'm Danielle Alvari. Hey guys, I'm Quincy Carr. I'm Cheryl Nelson. Happy to be here, and we are officially in the month of December. And who holiday planning, preparation, everything is in full swing, you guys. And it just got me thinking what we did to get ready for the holidays when we were kids. And I want to show you a picture. This is so funny. My parents always like to do a little photo shoot at home of my sister and me dressed up in Christmas attire for the Christmas cards. And I don't even know how old I was here. I, I'm not a good gauge. Hold up. Which one was you, Cheryl? Yeah, I'm Cheryl, the older, I'm the older one. Yeah, the oldest. Oh, the I wow. know. Yes, yeah. don't tell anybody well, about real hair color. <laughs> <laughs> Your parents were the parents that were on top of it because you had to take these pictures early to get them out. Nowadays, though, you can get these turned around quick, so it's not too late if you haven't taken your holiday photos yet. Yeah, right. that's a good point. Yeah, you can because now, boom, you get them printed instantly. But what about you guys? Any good memories of getting ready for the holidays? Oh. Uh... I just remember, um, you know, like my dad would have to get the lights and, 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 and go through the lights. And this was back in the 80s where it would be those big, colorful lights on the fuel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. The big ones that would start fires. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. The magic yeah. lights, as I call yeah. them. But, yeah. but we would have to help him untangle them. So, Ooh, yeah, it was, it, it was always, a you know, a fun time. But, you know, as, as a kid, we were just expecting to have a nice bright truck or something up under the tree at the end of the, you know. <laughs> I, I'm with Quincy. I loved the decorating, actually. I, I was one of those people we did have to wait till after Thanksgiving. This year, I, I went a little bit early, but I realized I still need to decorate my set here. So hopefully we'll have that going for next week. But also, Ooh, I feel like I, as an adult, have become the person who shops for people's Christmas gifts throughout the year. Uh, so I'm I'm looking for things and I go oh, I'm gonna store this and this me is too. gonna be for Christmas. Yeah, me too. I've so got a whole drawer. That's me getting stuff. ready. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, yes. whether you are uh, getting ready for the holidays, gonna be home for the holidays, or on the road today, we're gonna have some solutions for working from the road. Yeah, and more solutions too, ladies. Uh, we have pain and wellness solutions, and we take the pain out of the visit to the dentist. Oh, definitely want to do that. And it may be almost winter, but we will share some things you can do now to spruce up your yard for spring. But first, we've heard that Santa is on his way to Louisiana. Hmm, he might be coming early. More coming up next. Hey guys, welcome back to Main Street Living. We are ready to get this show going officially. And ladies, even with the lights blinking on all around the neighborhood, except for my house, and the smell of the holiday baking is making its way throughout the neighborhood streets. Some of us, like myself, still need a little push to get fully into the holiday spirit, don't you think? Quincy, I've got the perfect idea for you because one of the best ways to get into the holiday spirit is to bundle up, grab a warm beverage, and join in the excitement of a Christmas parade. And Heather Folks Givens is here to tell us about the parade plans in Baton Rouge this year. Welcome to Main Street Living. Good to see you. Good to see y'all. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. So you're gearing up for the 72nd annual Cortana Kiwanis Christmas Parade in downtown Baton Rouge on December 10th. Tell us a little bit about what you've got planned for this year's parade. We are super excited to be able to bring this parade to the city of Baton Rouge and, of course, all of the surrounding areas. We have um, a Battle of the Bands that is going to happen actually during the parade. We, um, we also have different vendors set up along the parade route. So we're hopeful that our normal crowd of 100,000 plus are able to come down. We're gonna have beautiful weather. And of course there will be plenty of hot chocolate and, um, and warm food to be sold. We have about um, 60 entries in our parade right now, but we can get up to 85. So we are still taking entries for the parade, but we have a good um, 30 plus floats that we are super excited about. They will be coming down the parade route. They are huge Mardi Gras style floats. They'll be 
plenty of throws. The kids are going to have a great time. We have 14 bands that are coming through. And then, of course, we have all of our wonderful dance groups that will be included and some emergency vehicles and then special guests as well. So mm -hmm. we're super excited to bring all of this to Baton Rouge and, um, and everybody that's wanting to come out and just enjoy some holiday festivities. There's lots to be excited about. So in addition to the floats and the dancers, you mentioned those 14 local high school marching bands that will be performing this year. What can you tell us about this battle of the bands? How is that going to be different than years past? So what we're going to do this year is it's not going to actually, the battle is not going to actually happen before the parade. It's going to happen during the parade. Ooh, wow. So while these bands are marching, there will be judges set up in a couple of different places along the parade route. And the band directors will know exactly where they are set up. Um, the first one being right by our VIP section. And the judges will be taking notes as the bands are performing and marching through. And, um, and then all of their notes and scores will be tabulated. And then we will announce all the winners at the very end of the parade on social media. So we're super excited to be able to do this. We worked in conjunction with a lot of the band directors on trying to figure out something that is um, better suitable for them so they're not having to get to the parade site as early and um, and it just works for everybody at the same time. So you're not only having to go to one place to see the performance, you're able to see performances all throughout the parade route. So make sure Ooh. to look at that parade route and, and be able to place yourself at any place because you'll be able to see those um those performances all over what a fun way to do that and mm -hmm. i'm curious does the winning school band win a prize or just some bragging rights both they actually Ooh. um we have a first second and third place winner our first place um could win a cash prize of 500 dollars, or they could choose to have 250 uh, plates of jambalaya cooked for a jambalaya fundraiser we, our club actually cooks jambalaya for a few nonprofits here in town as fundraisers. And so we're able to bring that back to the schools. We know that that will give them a lot more opportunities to be able to bring in um, more money to buy new band uniforms and things like that. So second place is $300 or 150 jambalaya plates and third place is $200 or 100 jambalaya plates. So we're super excited about bringing all of these new things to the bands and to the schools. Um, Kiwanis is all about kids. And so any way that we can give back to the kids and our community, we're looking for you know new and inventive ways to do that. And, and speaking of giving back, I mean, it is the season of giving and the Christmas parade is also a fundraiser. So who's going to benefit uh, from all this money that you're raising with the parade? I, obviously, kids, I'm expecting. Yes, we are um, always doing different activities with different kids around the city, uh, whether it's through different nonprofits, such as the Boys and Girls Club or the Big Buddy or anything else. Then, you know, we go ahead and we do things that way. Um you know, all the money does go to Cortana Kiwanis and then we partner up with different agencies and they actually go and, and they do different things with those agencies. So we're able to, whether it's building a new playground for an agency or it's just cooking jambalaya because they're having a Christmas play at the school, um, you know, we're able to just give back in many different sorts of ways. So fun that you're doing that. The parade kicks off at 530 on Saturday, December 10th. What's the best way to experience it? And of course, we have to ask if Santa will be there. Of course, Santa will be there. <laughs> Santa will be um, on the Coca-Cola float, which is one of the last floats that we have in the parade. So definitely stay until the very end so you can see Santa and Mrs. Santa. Um, and if you want to come out, please look on our website, which is www.christmasinvr.com. That will show you a map of the parade route and you can set up anywhere along the parade route. Um, there are VIP stands, which is right in front of the River Center on River Road. You can go to the website and buy tickets to get into the VIP stands if you don't want to just set up on the parade route. We have bleacher seating. We are um, going to provide jambalaya and Coca-Cola products, specialty beads, um, lots of fun at the VIP stands. And, of course, private bathrooms, which is very important when you oh, go to the parade. Nice. <laughs> Definitely. Well, Heather, thank you so much for joining us today. We can't wait to see the parade. 
Thank y'all so much. And we are super happy um, and excited to have everybody come down and join us. So we hope to see everybody on Saturday, December 10th. Awesome. Now, Cheryl, of course, if you're not in the area and you still want to catch it, the Cortana Kiwanis Christmas Parade will run on your view Sunday, December 18th at 7 p.m. and repeat through the 31st. Always fun to watch a good parade. That one sounds like a winner. And Danielle, don't go anywhere because coming up next on Main Street Living, it's that time of the year. We'll tell you where you can get all your health care needs met in one place. Welcome back to Main Street Living, Danielle, Quincy. Healthcare has become a very specialized science, which comes with both benefits and also with downsides. Yes, Cheryl, I know that you went through a bout of health concerns this year. And if, if you at home have had any injuries or healthcare issues lately, you've probably made several trips to several different doctors or clinics to treat each specific problem. Yeah. Now, Anodyne Pain and Wellness Solutions in Las Vegas gives you the care that you need all in one place so you can focus on achieving your best health. Take a look at this. Hi, I'm Susie from Anodyne of Las Vegas. I'm a co-owner of this integrated practice. We have medical care and chiropractic care. We also have some natural healing therapies, such as red light therapy, a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. We've got some amazing chiropractors. Our uh, medical doctor helps treat joint pain. Um, we don't prescribe pills or encourage surgery. Our athletes love it here too because they get IV hydration. They get to cool the inflammation in their body with red light and hyperbaric. Um, we also help patients with their sexual wellness needs. Anodyne is unique because we're an integrated clinic. We're a one-stop shop. Patients come here and they get to um, experience different types of treatments and they don't have to run across town looking for you know this type of, of uh, practitioner, that type of practitioner. We help them here. It all starts with our first initial exam. We go over thoroughly of what their complaint area is and in general health and how the general health has com complicated the complaint area. We don't just treat for the one place, we treat uh, each person as a whole. Pain from uh, disc injuries, pain from muscle injuries, pain from ligamentous connective tissue injuries. Uh, basically, that's what we do. There's a group of friends of mine, ladies, that we all go to the gym together, and one of them uh, was, is quite sick. She recovered from cancer and she started talking about this red light therapy. It's basically you climb into, it looks like a sunbed. You know, it's comfortable, it's, it's very soothing. I feel this, it kind of just gives me a little energy. I just find it's very easy, very convenient, and it's 15 minutes of my time. We want to help patients live the best life they can. And with these natural healing therapies and the different modalities, our providers collaborate on a patient to be able to get to the root cause of their pain and prescribe the best customized treatment for the patients. I've done a few. Um, I've done the, the IV um, rehydration. It, it, was, it was awesome. You know, we live in the desert. I don't drink enough water. You feel rejuvenated afterwards. The red light therapy, 15 minutes. You know, I can come down here on my lunch. Um, you know, I it really, I feel helps with um, some inflammation. I've got you know the beginnings of some arthritis, and it's, um, it's kind of your one-stop shop down here. I've you know talked to them a little bit about everything, and so I'm slowly working my way around. When their family and friends come and tell us so and so said to come see, you know, Doctor uh, Sedegi or Doctor Moran, Doctor Lukens, Tammy, our physician assistant. And that is the best feedback we can get. When they want to share the care that we provide, the best feeling in the world. Oh, guys, I love facilities like this. All the different modalities that you can do. The red light therapy looks pretty cool, too. Yeah. Yes. And you can find more information about the services available at Anodyne of Las Vegas on their website, anodynevegas.com. In the meantime, don't go anywhere. We've got more Main Street living. And coming up next, as we enter December, we'll teach you how to prep now for a beautiful spring garden. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Main Street Living, Quincy, Danielle. When we talk about trees this time of the year, you might assume we are referring to Christmas trees, but the trees in your yard could probably use some attention as well. Yes, and landscape contractor and designer Sarah Bendrick is here to tell us how to use these winter months to get our yards and gardens in tip-top shape for next spring. Welcome to Main Street Living, Sarah. Hey, thank you guys so much for having me. <laughs> so you have a very cool job. You are a landscape contractor and designer and host multiple projects on HGTV and DIY networks. How did you get started in this career? So my background is in landscape architecture. I studied that for a handful of years, graduated, and then I decided to go into contracting because I really like the do-it-yourself or also just like the hands-on aspect of landscape and construction. Like it's one thing to be able to design something, but it's a whole other thing to be able to implement it. So um, I just love that aspect. So I kind of leaned into the construction. And nowadays I run a company called Sarita uh, Landscapes Incorporated, which means Little Sarah, and we do design builds. Uh, landscape installations in Southern California. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool, Sarah. Now, what are some of the topics that you focus on mainly on your shows? Sure. So for the show specifically, each show has a little bit of a different format, but the general idea is let me help homeowners take their backyards and make them into beautiful, livable space. And how do they change the way that they live their current lives? How do they change the way that they feel, their moods and all of that? Because if you imagine walking out into a space that's just you know, falling apart, all the shrubs are dead, it's dirt and weeds, like it doesn't inspire you. <laughs> but if you have a space that has like a spot where you can go sit and work outside, the plants are charming and inviting, it completely changes your mood and really can change like the outlook on your day in a lot of ways. So I love the aspect of being able to like create outdoor living spaces for people where they can spend more time and reap the benefits of being outside. Nice. Absolutely. And I completely agree with you. I think that it really does elevate your mood. And I think we've become even more appreciative of that since the pandemic, obviously getting to spend yeah. time outside. Uh, unfortunately, we are heading into the winter season. So it may be tough for some people to spend time outside. But what can we be doing in our yards and gardens now to make our plants happier in the spring? Sure. So the interesting thing about my profession is it's all seasons. Um, there's always something changing. There's always something growing or dying or breaking. So it's something that you always kind of have to keep an eye on. And depending on where you are in the United States, you are going to be faced with different things. But for people that are in the areas that get a lot colder or maybe have snow, you really want to keep an eye on your bigger trees and any of the branching systems that might be vulnerable to heavy snowpack and losing branches. Because one, it's unhealthy for the tree, but two, it can be unhealthy for you and your family in your home if uh, you potentially have dangerous trees or branches around your home that can't withstand another year of heavy snow. So keeping an eye out on the trees in your that are near and surrounding your house and making sure that they're healthy and can withstand all of the winter coming up, that is one thing that you can do in the colder climates. In the warmer climates, um, you can do a lot more because <laughs> you can actually go outside and not freeze to death. Um, <laughs> but, but one of the big things is... Um, is just letting your garden rest. I think people always want their landscape to look 100% all the time. And it's not like a house when you renovate it and the paint stays on the wall and the bed never moves. In the garden, there's always things kind of changing. Um, but we have to also accept that your garden likes to sleep a little. In the fall and the winter, it's not going to be as spectacular as it might be in the spring and the summer. And so one, just accepting that. And two, cutting back things so they can regrow and be fresh in the spring is something that you can do as well. That is interesting, Sarah. I had no idea I had to worry about my garden getting good rest now. <laughs> I, I was going to about... say, it's good life advice, Quincy, really. Right. We, all, <laughs> you know, like, we all go through seasons. We all need some rest sometimes. Yeah, just let them sleep. <laughs> now, you know, along with sleeping, what are some tips to get our soil back in shape? Because clearly it's eating too much. <laughs> so I, I think soil is like the hidden like secret to like the best gardens in the world. And uh, most of us just don't really make the connection, but the soil of your health really affects the soil of your plants. So when I tell people about gardening, I'm like, what are you putting in your soil so that you can avoid the chemical fertilizers and all that additional stuff where if you had really good soil and all those nutrients were available to your plants, it's already there. It just needs to be available to your plants in a form that they recognize. So Increasing the biology, the biology in your soil, the micro um, biology, all of that stuff will really help your plants. So what I recommend to people is feeding their soil. You can use like mycorrhizal or you can use um, there's a lot of 
different products out there, but there's one I like. Uh, I'm going to plug them because I really I use them all the time. <laughs> um, but it, they're called Organics, and it's like a soil inoculant, more or less. And I spray it over the plant leaves, and I put it on the soil, and that really just helps grow the biology in the soil, which makes your plants stronger, meaning you'll need, like, less chemical or none at all to make your plants and gardens be healthy for you and themselves nice okay uh sarah i want to ask you just because we're kind of on the topic of your soil like do you do any composting what are your thoughts on composting people who want to do something like that because that might be something that people perhaps in california participate in more since it's a little milder there <laughs> sure and i i have to confess i am not currently doing any composting but it's such a wonderful thing and I, i'm blaming it on how much i've traveled <laughs> I am bouncing from one location to the other all the time. So uh, composting is an awesome thing. And even in San Diego County, they're coming up with these uh, bins that they're going to be providing with residents so they can put their food scraps in these containers. And the county is oh, actually wow. helping um, recycle that material and turn it into compost. So that that's a wonderful thing. It's becoming mainstream. And I'm so excited to hear that because there's so much like latent and hidden um, nutrients in our food waste that can really just be like put aside with a minimal effort and you can recycle those back into your garden creating a really healthy and vibrant space. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Now, so, so I got to ask you, do you feel it's very essential to care for and embrace the outdoor spaces? Because a lot of people just look at them as just outdoor. Sure. I, I face that all the time. Whenever people are doing renovations and all that stuff, the, the last of the budget is always the landscaping. Mm. Um, <laughs> then it's the, they're like, oh, the home's perfect now. And like, oh, we'll get there. But um, I would say that in terms of the landscaping, I think it's one of the most important parts of the yard because you've already paid for this real estate. Um, or if you're renting, you have this space. Why not maximize your usable space? Obviously, if you're in spaces in like Southern California or warmer climates, you're going to get a longer um, time use of that investment. So that might also dictate how much money do I want to put into this space? But if you're living in like a hospitable climate, you might as well build that outdoor space because you will benefit from being outside. Like um, just the energy it gives you and the relaxation and all those things, you're doing yourself a disservice by not developing it. And we don't want to forget the people in the North. Like you still get a nice winter garden too. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can just view it from the outside, you know, there you go. Stay <laughs> or view safe, the inside out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Sarah, we're so excited you were able to stop by today. We know you have some projects coming up on your view and we're looking forward to that. But in the meantime, how can viewers keep track of what you're up to? Sure. So you can check out my TikTok, which is Sarah Bendrick. Um, I also have Instagram that I'm fairly active on YouTube. And you can also check out my website, sarahbendrick.com. And that's Sarah without an H. Nice, nice. Thanks again, sir, for stopping by. We'll look forward to catching you on TV. All right. Thank you guys for having me. <laughs> all right. All right, Danielle. Well, found out something about plants and gardens, life and all that stuff. But up next, we're going to the kids because a dentist your kids will really love. Is that possible? Oh, my God. Welcome back into Main Street Living. Guys, you might not believe it, but one of my absolute favorite activities growing up was going to the dentist. I could not wait. I had the best dentist. She gave <laughs> out great toys. There was a whole like drawer full of toys. And after you were finished, she would tell you how many you could take. There were stickers. There, were, I mean, I would think about what I was going to get next time I went. So okay. this was so much fun for me growing up. Okay, so... So you, your experience was clearly better than mine. I hated it, and I don't want to relive any of it again. It was the worst. It was absolutely worst. Yeah, you guys, I'm I'm very surprised by this because the dentist. I love the toys. Yes, still didn't make me want to go. Uh, however, the folks at Quest Pediatric Dentistry and Orthodontics are making the dentist's office a place kids love to visit. Like Danielle, it's true. You got to check this out. Here at our office, we have a very kid-friendly atmosphere, video games, pirate ship, mainly and stuff to ease the child as they walk in the office, to get their mind off of basically the actual appointment, make it a fun, friendly place for them to visit and actually enjoy the dentistry part of it. Um, as we bring them in the back, we make sure that they are comfortable in every way. And, and we like to enjoy having fun with them. 
Here we also serve um, all of the child's dental needs. Depending on the age of your child, um, for the first dental visit, um, usually we'll just do an exam and we'll, we'll talk about certain things like diet habits, um, oral hygiene practices, things like that. Show them around the office, show them dental tools, just make them kind of comfortable and used to it. And when you bring your child every six months, they're going to get used to things that we're doing here and you're going to notice them become more comfortable and more confident. So here at Quest, we provide a multitude of orthodontic services, one of those which includes uh, traditional metal braces. We also provide ceramic or clear braces, as well as clear aligners. What's so unique about pediatric dentistry is that we have the chance to teach and educate um, families and children about prevention. What is um, beneficial oral hygiene practices and how diet can play a role in dental disease. We definitely recommend choosing a pediatric dentist for your children, just as you would choose a pediatrician for your, for your child, for their regular doctor's visits. We're going to educate the parent and the child on brushing, hygiene, uh, foods that are good for the teeth, foods that are bad for the teeth, all of those things. What sets us apart, you know, we take care of every child as if they were our own, but more importantly, we also take care of the parent. And what I mean by that is to put them at ease, and to make everything as easy as possible for them when they bring their children to us. We treat each child as our own and we have fun day in and day out um, using different behavioral guidance techniques in order to help alleviate or um, eliminate any fear or anxiety that our patients may present with. I enjoy watching my patient smiles transform and the confidence that it instills in them. A beautiful smile can make you feel empowered and confident. I truly feel like our office is set apart from the rest. The compassion that the doctors have, and not only the doctors, but our entire team from the moment that you walk into the office till the time you leave, you will be treated with kindness and compassion. I can see why Danielle liked going to the dentist as a kid, especially if it looked like that. And those coins, those pirate coins, I bet you they weren't chocolate, though, because what dentist would give out chocolate? <laughs> All I know <laughs> is that I wish my dentist in my experience was as cool as the kids to get a chance to go to this dentist. But you guys can find more information <laughs> about the services available at Quest Pediatric Dentistry and Orthodontics on their website, people, at questdds.com. We will have to check that out. But don't go anywhere because coming up next on Main Street Living, this is something I love to do. But do you want to mix travel and work? Hmm, don't miss our next segment coming up. Hey there, welcome back into Main Street Living. Now, the past couple of years have brought a lot of changes and there's been a big shift in how we all think about work and whether or not we really need to be in the office to be productive. Oh my gosh, that is so right. And flexible working situations have become the norm for a lot of professions and many travel enthusiasts like myself have started to realize that they can work from just about anywhere that has power and an internet connection. To explore more about this exciting shift, please welcome adventure travel photographers back to the show, Giselle and Steven. Good to see you guys again. Likewise. Yeah. So nice to be back on the show. So we just love it that you both used to work regular nine to five jobs, but now you work from the road. How are you able to make this transition? Enlighten us some more. I feel like the biggest thing that has changed from how we do it is being able to have, we use this thing called a Jackery port portable power station. Makes it super easy so we can plug our laptops in. So whether we're like next to a mountain or a lake or a river, we can instantly have power on the go. And then as well as the whole invention of like portable Wi-Fi units or um, same thing with Starlink coming out, being able to get Wi-Fi from anywhere we work has been super, super helpful. And it's been so nice to just not get tied down into the office. I used to work a nine to five in the office every Monday to Friday and would have to only spend my time from Friday night to Sunday morning uh, adventuring and then have to drive back and head back into the office. So it's really nice being able to have the flexibility of 
traveling anywhere and being able to work from anywhere. Mm. Yeah, you know, I would think so as well. But when you're traveling with a couple of pieces of equipment, I mean, you know, going on the plane has got to has got to create a couple of a couple of issues or obstacles. I would think. So, what tools do you need more specifically to be able to stay connected from anywhere? I feel like the biggest thing that we need is just our laptop. That's been made it super super easy, and then finding a way to power it. Like I said, the Jackery station that we use, it gives us solar panels. So whether even if we're out in the boondocks for a week or a few, or e- uh, even a one or two days, we can plug it in. And then as the battery starts to die, we just throw out our solar panels, charge up again, and we can t- continue working from there. Nice. Oh. I wish cell phones work that way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Can you hear me now? I hate doing that stuff. But that's so cool about the solar. It's great for the environment as well. What were some things that you discovered about working from the road that maybe you weren't expecting? I think the availability of Wi-Fi was the biggest one. Um, That is definitely our biggest struggle that we run into when we're doing our digital nomad um, work routine. But it has become a lot more available with like in-car Wi-Fi and and Starlink and things like that. But that's definitely something that we didn't think about at first. We just kind of assumed there would be Wi-Fi everywhere. So that's when you're starting out on your digital nomad journey, make sure to think about that when you have work calls or things like that that you have to attend to. <laughs> well, well, so so I have to ask, like, what do you guys say is the best part about working from anywhere? Is it the food? Is it just the different places? Is it the climate? I feel like the flexibility, honestly, is the biggest thing. Because before we worked the Monday to Friday, it's like, okay, we have only Saturday and Sunday to get out. And that was when it was always busy because that's when everyone else usually has their day off. So the flexibility to be able to work Thursday to Sunday or Monday and then have a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or even just a random day here and there to be like, I want to go for a hike today instead of working. It gives us so much more flexibility. Super jealous about this. I need to do this more. I do it a little bit, but... What additional advice would you have for someone aspiring to combine work and travel? How can they really make it happen? Because we all would like to ditch, or most of us would like to ditch our nine to five jobs. But how do you do that and make a living? I think the biggest thing is making travel a priority. That's one thing that we've noticed a lot of um, people that work remotely is that they make travel the number one focus. And so that way, you know, when you're putting that ahead of time, you can schedule your work around your top interests and still be able to balance both. A lot of people don't put travel first and that's where they're like more prone to make excuses about balancing the two. Um, But yeah, just a shift in mindset, I would say. A shift in the mindset. Do you guys uh, deal with a lot of delays? I know like traveling during the holidays, uh, that can kind of put a damper in some things. Is that has that affected you guys? I feel like the the during the holidays, we usually plan it. So 11 months of the year, we're going, going, going. And that's where we get most of our work on. And then during the holidays is mostly our time off where we like to come home, see our family. We don't we only have one more trip of the year before we have three weeks at home. And that's where we're going to kind of reset before we hit the new year. But well, that's another nice. thing about working remotely is like you don't have to only travel on the holidays. That's before before doing this, we would stack PTO on holiday weekends. Right and try and make it as long as possible. And now we don't have to do that. So yeah. And speaking of working from the road, it sounds like you're working from the road right now. Where are you guys? <laughs> We're in Florida right now. We just got off an airplane. We are in transit. We have a couple things to do later today. So happy that we got to make it on the show though. See, you can still make it happen. I love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, just showing folks how they can do it. Now, of course, we got viewers that's going to want to know how they can follow you guys and get more information about the Jackery solar generators. Absolutely. So you can follow us at The Lover's Passport on all platforms on social media. And you can follow Jackery as well um, on their social media and check them out at jackery.com to check out our favorite solar generators. Mm. That is awesome. You two yeah. look very happy. Continue to travel. Continue to travel safe. And thank you for taking the time out. Just scheduled to stop by and talk with us today. Perfect. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Yeah, thank you. Oh, Quincy, I'm so jealous of them. I heard all the noise in the background and I'm going, yeah. you know what? I love that. I and love all the motion and commotion of traveling. It's so much fun. Well, that's exactly what a lot of people are doing. And up next, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that have the World Cup fever. They've caught that, right? Oh. But we're going we're gonna to dig a little closer right here in the United States with a soccer team that's doing their thing. So stay right there. <laughs> Welcome.
Welcome back to Main Street Living. Danielle Quincy, soccer is the undisputed champion of sports here on earth. And in fact, more than 5 billion people are expected to tune in to watch this year's World Cup. That's right, Cheryl. And here in the U.S., we're starting to kind of get on that bandwagon, don't you think? And when the San Diego Loyal Soccer Club launched in 2019, fan clubs sprang up to support their new home team. That's right. The passion of the Los Chavos de Loyal shines through both at the games and in the community. Let's check them out. Los Chavos is the support group we support San Diego Loyal Soccer Club. We basically are kind of like a barra style supporter group, kind of like a South American flavor uh, from San Diego. Supporter culture, just especially because the sport is so big, it's worldwide. You have supporter culture that's um, different kind of styles. So you have a European way of supporting South American. So what we wanted to bring is kind of like that South American, Mexican, Argentinian kind of culture here. We bring a different culture. So we bring the, obviously the Spanish chants, um, uh, chants from the barrio. You know, we bring that bombo, the repique. Those, these are just drums that are used in South America. Now that we have something for our very own, it's it's beautiful and you know we can really, you know, manipulate it to be the way we want it to be and and to something that really represents us personally. So before the game we go and set up our trapos, which are our banners. We go to the stadium, put our drums in there, um, and then make sure everything looks good for, for game day. So in the 109 we have currently three different supporter groups. We have ourselves, and then we have the locals, and then we have the Rainbow Loyals, which are our um, LGBTQ pride supporter group. And between the three of us, we've decided to come together in that one section and really kind of blend and really kind of make one sound and one community that represents all of San Diego. You know, when you play the drums and when you, when you sing the songs, you know, it does something for yourself. Places that uh, Chavos hang out at. Game day is for sure a uh, death brewing, uh, pre games for home games. And then we got away spots like uh, Three Panqueos, we have Novo, uh, Brazil, and we have Queburos in National City. We're a part of the community, we live here. I know for a fact that anything that's donated to us ever, whether it be backpacks, turkeys, Christmas gifts, anything like that, it's going back to the children, and we make sure of that. The backpack drive is something that's very fulfilling to me because last year we handed out 75 backpacks on Logan Avenue and then come November we'll have our third annual turkey drive which we'll be giving out turkeys and all the fixings. Last year was our first big season together and you know it was amazing and you know it's been a building project from the beginning since I met these guys to now but to see how much has grown from then to now has been amazing. Chavos is definitely a family atmosphere. We invite everybody to like uh, come to the games, you know, come chant with us. If you, uh, even if you're not in the section, come watch the game. It's fun. Everybody is, it, everybody's welcome. Well, ladies, now that is what I call the true power of representation within your own community. And the best part is they even give back to invest in their youth. Mm, I absolutely love that. And you can find out more about the Los Chavos de Loyal fan club on their website, chavosdeloyal.com. All right, guys, straight ahead. Still more of Main Street Living. You guys stay right there. Hey guys, welcome back to Main Street Living. We got to get out of here, and uh, I may have to go down to Louisiana, okay, and, and 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 at least try to savor some of my childhood experiences going to that dentist office. Yes, maybe wow. next week we can heal Quincy's inner child. So yeah, I, I think that. that's a good idea. And Q, you know, they might actually want to clean your teeth there. Would you let them? Yeah, as long as I can play on the pirate ship. Oh, okay. That's all right. Road trip. That's it. We're going.
<laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? If you guys uh, missed this episode and so many of our other episodes, you can always go to our Cox Contour app. It's the same, but with new episodes every week, right? We love the app. And also, don't forget, you can catch brand new episodes of Main Street Living, 9 p.m. Mondays, local time. So join us then if we take another stroll down Main Street.